Yo guys, what is going on? Sorry of here. Hey guys, what is going on? Sorry of here, and this is the first episode of a brand new series on my channel called Programming Stories. In each episode of this series, I am going to talk about one programming-related incident in my life, which happened while I was at work, or while I was working on a project, or while I was in college. And the intent behind the series is that they will have both an educational element as well as an entertaining element to them. So I'm going to jump right into the first story. It was November of 2016, and I was in college at that time, and I was, you know. Late to class as usual. As usual. And as I had woken up late, I also missed the breakfast uh, at my dormitory's dining hall. So I thought that you know before going to my classes, I grab a quick bite at the cafeteria. So I go to the cafeteria, I order my stuff, and I hand out a 500 rupee note to the cashier, and he just looks at me with amusement. He tells me that they are no longer accepting any notes uh, which are above 100 rupees in value. And as it had turned out that the government of India had overnight declared all of these higher denomination notes as illegal tender. So to give you guys some context, I am from India, and in the November of 2016, the government of India had announced this. Nationwide event called the demonetization event, wherein a lot of these higher currency notes just became, you know, invaluable, and the entire population of India was expected to, you know, exchange these notes uh, at the banks for the newer notes of the same value. As a student, I needed cash for my daily basic needs, and the most of the currency notes which I had, they also became invalid overnight, and. Our college was very far away from the city, but it did have a bank branch inside the campus, and we also had two ATM machines inside the campus. And both the uh, bank branch as well as the ATMs used to get unloaded with these newer currency bills only once in a few days. But the problem was that this entire operation, right, was not well planned, and the majority of the banks in the entire nation simply could not keep up with the demands of the public. I mean, there were huge lines. People would, you know, gather around the ATMs in long lines, waiting hours on end, just to get a few thousand rupees exchange. And same was the case in my campus as well. Students would line up outside the ATMs for hours on end, trying to get some money exchanged. And even the banks would run out of these newer currency bills very quickly, and they would only be able to get the next batch of newer currency bills like once in a few days. So. Going to the bank to get my currency bills exchanged was no longer an option, and even the ATMs used to run out of cash like that. Luckily, one good thing which our college did was that they used to update the status of these two ATM machines in our campus on our college portal. So we had an intranet uh, inside of our college, which was only accessible within the college, and all of our college portals and everything was hosted in this intranet. And in one of the web pages of this intranet, our college also updated the status of these two ATM machines as to whether or not they are functioning and whether they have the newer currency bills or not. But due to the insane rush, um, these two ATM machines would used to uh, used to stay in the green state for a very short amount of time and would spend a majority of the times, you know, in the red state. And one couldn't keep checking this uh, portal, you know, very frequently. That I mean, how often would you check it? So, you know, looking at this opportunity, uh, this sparked the you know programmer in me. And uh, if you want to, you know, monitor a web page or a website continuously, it's pretty simple and straightforward to do that, right? I mean, it's very simple to write a script which would do that for you. And that is exactly what I did. I wrote a very small Python script using beautiful soap and requests, which pings this web page every 10 seconds. Grabs the status of these two ATM machines, and it sends me an SMS on my phone uh, if any ATM just became green or just became red, saying that look, sort of, um, this ATM just came online. You better go fast and grab some cash before anyone else does. So the only thing which I needed now was to have this script running, you know, pretty much 24/7. I mean, there's no point of running it like one hour in a day or something because. You know, it is quite possible that you know, in the time where the script is not running, it is possible that one ATM might come online and go offline within that time, and you know, you would miss out on the window. So at this point, I did think of trying to deploy this application and have it running on my personal laptop, 
you know, 24/7. But I wasn't particularly comfortable doing that because I had to take my laptop to my classes, I had my homework and stuff. And also, when you're living with roommates, it's a whole other problem to have your laptop out and about, you know, unlocked. So at this point, I also thought of you know deploying my application on an AWS instance and have it run there. But then I quickly realized that that would not work because this portal was only available on our intranet and the AWS instance would not have access to it. So what I did was, back, in, back at that time, I was involved with our college's tech fest and they had given me access to one of their servers to host our tech fest related application and I still had the credentials for that. So what I did was secretly when no one was looking, I logged into the server, I transferred my application there, I started it up and had it running in the background this guy as a system process so that it goes unnoticed. And it just ran there in the background, you know, 24-7. And that's about it. So now that the application was deployed over there, I would get a message on my phone within a 10 second delay whenever an ATM came online. And this script really, really came in handy for me because at that time there was a limit on the number of withdrawals you could make in the ATM in one transaction and I had to make multiple such transactions in the coming weeks just to meet my basic expenses. And as soon as we would get such a message uh, from this script, um, I would gather a couple of close friends of mine and we would you know, dash to the ATM and get some money before anyone else does. So yeah, that's how I use Python to withdraw money from the ATM during the times of demonetization. And this is what I like about code, you know. You don't have to write fancy algorithms or anything to, you know, to get something useful out of it. These simple things, automating these simple things in your life could go a long way to save you a ton of time and ton of effort in the long run. So that has been it for this video guys. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comments if you think this programming story is a good idea and if you like it or not. And stay tuned for more such content. Thank you.